Genesis 16. Sarai, Abraham's wife, had no children. She had a slave girl from Egypt named Hagar. Sarai said to Abraham, Look, the Lord has not allowed me to have children, so have physical relations with my slave girl. If she has a child, maybe I can have my own family through her. Abram did what Sarai said. This was after Abram lived ten years in Canaan. And Sarai gave Hagar to her husband Abram. Hagar was her slave girl from Egypt. Abram had physical relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. When Hagar learned she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress Sarai badly. Then Sarai said to Abram, This is your fault. I gave my slave girl to you, and when she became pregnant, she began to treat me badly. Let the Lord decide who is right, you or me. But Abram said to Sarai, You are Hagar's mistress. Do anything you want to her. Then Sarai was hard on Hagar, and Hagar ran away. The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a spring of water in the desert. The spring was by the road to Shur. The angel said, Hagar, you are Sarai's slave girl. Where have you come from? Where are you going? Hagar answered, I am running from my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Go home to your mistress and obey her. The angel of the Lord also said, I will give you so many descendants, they cannot be counted. The angel also said to her, You are now pregnant and you will have a son. You will name him Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your cries. Ishmael will be like a wild donkey. He will be against everyone, and everyone will be against him. He will attack all his brothers. The slave girl gave a name to the Lord who spoke to her. She said to him, You are God who sees me. This is because she said to herself, Have I really seen God who sees me? So the well there was called Beer Leharoi. It is between Kadesh and Bered. Hagar gave birth to a son for Abram, and Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar gave birth to Ishmael. Matthew chapter 15 Now some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem. They asked him, Why do your followers not obey the rules given to us by the great people who live before us? Your followers don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus answered, And why do you refuse to obey God's command so that you can follow those rules you have? God said, Honor your father and mother. And God also said, Anyone who says cruel things to his father or mother must be put to death. But you say, that a person can tell his father or mother, I have something I could use to help you, but I will not use it for you. I will give it to God. You teach that person not to honor his father. You teach that it is not important to do what God said. You think that it is more important to follow the rules you have. You are hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he spoke about you. These people show honor to me with words, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is worthless. The things they teach are nothing but human rules they have memorized. Jesus called the crowd to him. He said, listen and understand what I'm saying. It is not what a person puts into his mouth that makes him unclean. It is what comes out of his mouth that makes him unclean. Then his followers came to Jesus and asked, do you know that the Pharisees are angry because of what you said? Jesus answered, Every plant that my Father in heaven has not planted himself will be pulled up by the roots. Stay away from the Pharisees. They are blind leaders. And if a blind man leads another blind man, then both men will fall into a ditch. Peter said, Explain the story to us. Jesus said, You still have trouble understanding? Surely you know that all the food that enters the mouth goes into the stomach, then that food goes out of the body. But what a person says with his mouth comes from the way he thinks, and these are the things that make him unclean. Out of the mind 
come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, stealing, lying, and saying bad things against other people. These things make a person unclean. But eating with unwashed hands does not make him unclean. Jesus left that place and went to the area of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that area came to Jesus. The woman cried out, Lord, son of David, please help me. My daughter has a demon and she is suffering very much. But Jesus did not answer the woman. So the followers came to Jesus and begged him, tell the woman to go away. She's following us and shouting. Jesus answered, God sent me only to the lost sheep, the people of Israel. Then the woman came to Jesus again. She bowed before him and said, Lord, please help me. Jesus answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. The woman said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the pieces of food that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. I will do what you ask me to do. And at that moment, the woman's daughter was healed. Then Jesus left that place and went to the shore of Lake Galilee. He went up on a hill and sat there. Great crowds came to Jesus. They brought their sick with them, the lame, the blind, the crippled, the dumb, and many others. They put them at Jesus' feet and he healed them. The crowd was amazed when they saw that people who could not speak were able to speak again. The cripple were made strong again. Those who could not walk were able to walk again. The blind were able to see again. And they praised the God of Israel for this. Jesus called his followers to him and said, I feel sorry for these people. They have been with me three days and now they have nothing to eat. I don't want to send them away hungry. They might faint while they're going home. His followers asked him, Where can we get enough bread to feed all these people? We are far away from any town. Jesus asked, How many loaves of bread do you have? They answered, We have seven loaves and a few small fish. Jesus told the people to sit on the ground. He took the seven loaves of bread and the fish and gave thanks to God for the food. Then Jesus divided the food and gave it to his followers. They gave the food to the people. All the people ate and were satisfied. After this, the followers filled seven baskets with the pieces of food that were not eaten. There were about 4,000 men there who ate, besides women and children. After they ate, Jesus told the people to go home. He got into a boat and went to the area of Magadan. Nehemiah chapter 5 The men and their wives complained loudly against their fellow Jews. Some of them were saying, We have many sons and daughters in our families. To eat and stay alive, we need grain. Others were saying, We are borrowing money to get grain. There's not much food. We might not be able to pay back the money we've borrowed. Then we will have to pay with our fields, vineyards and homes. And still others were saying, we are having to borrow money. We have to pay the king's tax on our fields and vineyards. We are just like our fellow Jews. Our sons are like their sons, but we have to sell our sons and daughters as slaves. Some of our daughters have already been sold, but there's nothing we can do. Our fields and vineyards already belong to other people. When I heard their complaints about these things, I was very angry. I thought about it. Then I accused the important people and the leaders. I told them, you are charging your own brothers too much interest. So I called a large meeting to deal with them. I said to them, our fellow Jews had been sold to non-Jewish nations. But as much as possible, we have brought them back. Now you are making your fellow Jews sell themselves to us. The leaders were quiet. They had nothing to say. Then I said, What you are doing is not right. You should live in fear of God. Don't let our non-Jewish enemies shame us. I, my brothers and my men are also lending money and grain to the people. But stop charging them too much for this. 
give back their fields, vineyards, olive trees, and houses right now. Also give them back the extra amount you charge them. That is the hundredth part of the money, grain, new oil, new wine and oil. They said, we will give it back, and we will not demand anything more from them. We will do as you say. Then I called to the priests, and I made the important men and leaders promise to do what they had said. Also, I shook out the folds of my robe. I said, in this way, may God shake out every man who does not keep his promise. May God shake him out of his house, and may he shake him out of the things that are his. Let the man be shaken out and emptied. Then the whole group said, Amen. And they praised the Lord. So the people did what they had promised. I was appointed governor in the land of Judah. This was in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes' rule. I was governor till his 32nd year. So I was governor of Judah for 12 years. During that time, neither my brothers nor I ate the food that was allowed for the governor. But the governors before me placed a heavy load on the people. They took about 100 pounds of silver from each person, and they took food and wine. The governor's helpers before me also controlled the people. But I did not do that because I feared God. I worked on the wall. So did all my men who were gathered there. We did not buy any fields. Also, I fed 150 Jews and officers at my table, and I fed those who came from the nations around us. This is what was prepared every day for me and those who ate with me. One ox, six good sheep and birds, and every ten days there were all kinds of wine, but I never demanded the food that was allowed for the governor. This was because the people were already working very hard. Remember, my God, to be kind to me. Remember all the good I have done for these people. Acts chapter 15 Then some men came to Antioch from Judea. They began teaching the non-Jewish brothers, You cannot be saved if you are not circumcised. Moses taught us to do this. Paul and Barnabas were against this teaching and argued with the men about it. So the group decided to send Paul, Barnabas and some other men to Jerusalem. There they could talk more about this with the apostles and elders. The church helped the men leave on the trip. They went through the countries of Phoenicia and Samaria, telling all about how the non-Jewish people had turned to God. This made all the believers very happy. When they arrived in Jerusalem, the apostles, the elders and the church welcomed them. Paul, Barnabas and the others told about all the things that God had done with them. But some of the believers who had belonged to the Pharisee group came forward. They said, The non-Jewish believers must be circumcised. We must tell them to obey the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders gathered to study this problem. There was a long debate. Then Peter stood up and said to them, Brothers, you know what happened in the early days. God chose me from among you to preach the good news to the non-Jewish people. They heard the good news from me and they believed. God, who knows the thoughts of all men, accepted them. He showed this to us by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. To God, those people are not different from us. When they believed, he made their hearts pure. So now, why are you testing God? You are putting a heavy load around the necks of the non-Jewish brothers. It is a load that neither we nor our fathers were able to carry. But we believe that we and they too will be saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus. Then the whole group became quiet. They listened to Paul and Barnabas speak. Paul and Barnabas told about all the miracles and signs that God did through them among the non-Jewish people. After they finished speaking, James spoke. He said, Brothers, listen to me. Simon has told us how God showed his love for the non-Jewish people. For the first time, he has accepted them and made them his people. The words of the prophets agree with this too. After these things, I will return. 
The kingdom of David is like a fallen tent, but I will rebuild it, and I will again build its ruins, and I will set it up. Then those people who are left alive may ask the Lord for help, and all people from other nations may worship me, says the Lord, and he will make it happen. And these things have been known for a long time. So I think we should not bother the non-Jewish brothers who have turned to God. Instead, we should write a letter to them. We should tell them these things. Do not eat food that has been offered to idols. This makes the food unclean. Do not take part in any kind of sexual sin. Do not taste blood. Do not eat animals that have been strangled. They should not do these things because there are still men in every city who teach the law of Moses. For a long time, the words of Moses have been read in the synagogue every Sabbath day. The apostles, the elders, and the whole church decided to send some of their men with Paul and Barnabas to Antioch. They chose Judas, Barsabbas, and Silas, who were respected by the believers. They sent the following letter with them. From the apostles and elders, your brothers, to all the non-Jewish brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, Dear brothers, we have heard that some of our men have come to you and said things that trouble and upset you, but we did not tell them to do this. We have all agreed to choose some men and send them to you. They will be with our dear friends, Paul and Barnabas, men who have given their lives to serve our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have sent Judas and Silas with them. They will tell you the same things. It has pleased the Holy Spirit that you should not have a heavy load to carry, and we agree. You need to do only these things. Do not eat any food that has been offered to idols. Do not taste blood. Do not eat any animals that have been strangled. Do not take part in any kind of sexual sin. If you stay away from these things, you will do well. Goodbye. So the men left Jerusalem and went to Antioch. There they gathered the church and gave them the letter. When they read it, they were very happy because of the encouraging letter. Judas and Silas were also prophets, who said many things to encourage the believers and make them stronger. After some time, Judas and Silas were sent off in peace by the believers. They went back to those who had sent them. But Silas decided to remain there. But Paul and Barnabas stayed in Antioch. They and many others preached the good news and taught the people the message of the Lord. After some time, Paul said to Barnabas, We preached the message of the Lord in many towns. We should go back to all those towns to visit the believers and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John Mark with them too. But John Mark had left them in Pamphylia. He did not continue with them in the work. So Paul did not think it was a good idea to take him. Paul and Barnabas had a serious argument about this. They separated and went different ways. Barnabas sailed to Cyprus and took Mark with him. But Paul chose Silas and left. The believers in Antioch put Paul into the Lord's care. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, giving strength to the churches.